Welcome to the world today. I'm Vakas Majid Khan. Today we're talking about uh, the issues that women face uh, all over the world, but specifically in Pakistan. Uh, we have gender violence, we have uh, honor killings, uh, sexual harassment. All these issues uh, are very serious issues that need to be addressed because they also indicate the, um, the uh, level of mental health of the society overall. So I think it's something that needs to be discussed. And to talk about these issues, joining me for the conversation today, uh, we have, first of all, uh, Afshar Tehseen. She's a rights activist. And with her, we have advocate uh, Amna Azim, who's a legal expert. Thank you very much, ladies, for being here. Ma'am, uh, starting uh, with the legal aspects of uh, how women are given protection in Pakistani society, we've seen that there has been a lot of uh, backlash and a lot of uh, uh, roadblocks in achieving uh, rights for women's protection. Why do you think that is the case? In fact, uh, let me just uh, give you the recent example of Hadija murder case that what happened. So uh, in, in spite of the fact that she herself was a law student and she had lots of support from lawyers community, but again, she could not get justice. There are lots of reasons because overall this judiciary system works on evidence based, you know, reporting. Uh, normally, it's the powers with the judge to use, exercise his own judgment, but normally what they do is the police investigation report is what they follow mostly. So in that case, what happened, the investigation was so poor, there were so many gaps, that in spite of the fact if they wanted to give that judgment, they couldn't do, and the, favor, the case went in favor of the you know, accused. So normally, there are lots of reasons, not uh, just one or two reasons overall, which give us this type of dynamic, which overall results in a very much disappointment in society and uh, lots of like it was not a failure on the part of one lady but it was failure on the part of the whole society it was the overall the justice which was butchered and the message went to the community in pakistan was not a positive message i being a woman did not take it very nicely my kids did not take it very nicely overall every person in pakistan did not take it very nicely and it's i just when i was discussing that case and i then had uh, uh, just investigated other little bit, you know, Reiki in other cases like the Bukhtara Mai, which was a very famous case. Why she could not get justice because of the same poor investigation reports of the police. Uh, in Pakistan, it's not only judiciary, it's before that there's the overall process. And if we see the systems are so weak, they are so bleak, they are so inefficient, then in spite of the very clear cut evidences, things are not moved properly in a very systematic way. Uh, the police is not trained, they don't know how to do investigation. The forensic you know, evidence system is not in place. Even there is a book called the, the, the Book of Law. Uh, that is always, if you find even in Punjab and other places in, in judiciary, you will find very old books. Right now there are books of 2001, 2002, 2003, but after, during these uh, you know, 10, 15 years, there are lots of changes in different laws. And then these books are only in the, with the lawyers, they are not with the police stations. And all those SHOs and concerned people who, you know, lodge, uh, write FIR, they don't have proper uh, uh, information. They use all that old data and put it, and that's why the, the overall evidences and reports are always very weak. And if by somehow some lawyers who have on their own, uh, with their personal effort, they make sure that the latest, uh, you know, these evidences are used, they contact the police station and they tell them, they said, we don't have any such information from the government, they did not provide us. And there will be very few cases when SHOs, they buy these such things from their own pocket. And if you give them those latest, uh, you know, these uh, books, major act books, they could not read it. Then they demand, oh, they are in English. Please, are all those people who write reports, Muharrads and other people, they need something in Urdu. So again, you know, all those reports which are prepared are based on the very old data or there is no data. Then those things go to the judges and they have to follow. Again, it is procedures, uh, procedure, those procedures. So uh, this is one thing. And another thing overall is definitely a patriarchal society. Overall, though, in Pakistan, women comprise 51% of the overall population. But the sad reality is if you see the gender gap report, out of 44 globally, we come on the 143rd number. Means we are first from the bottom in the, in the, in the world, which is a very, very alarming situation that where do you fall in terms of gender parity in, in Pakistan? So this does not speak a good, good overall picture, uh, I must say. So it, it is a very tragic situation, uh, unfortunately. But there, there has been uh, a uh, backlash on social media uh, or a reaction, a very strong reaction on social media when we talk about the Khatija Siddiqui case in particular. But that's just uh, one isolated case. Yeah. Pakistan is full of uh, stories of uh, 
uh, of atrocities that have been committed against women. We have the Zainab child rape case. We have the Sana Chima honor killing case. So the story goes on and on and on. Uh, what is it that is ailing our society, in your opinion, that we uh, are still struggling with uh, trying to give women equal rights as is required by law and as also required by our faith? Okay, so as ma'am said, of course, there's the institutions that are weak, so the evidence is lacking. The police is very gender sensitive. Of course, it's a patriarchal society. They will always think th there's a lot of victim blaming that happens. So it's always the woman's fault because she either instigated it, she asked for it. So there's, of course, that. I mean, this case has been reported. It's come out in the media because she got a lot of media support. But recently, I, you know, the, the thousands of cases, I recently just read a case in Char Sadda where a woman was killed because she didn't give birth to a boy. So this is, this is an ongoing problem in the so society itself. It's the fabric that's the problem. So we need to start at home. You, the parents has, are to tell their sons how to behave, tell, bring, bring their daughters to a certain standing. If you look at the advertisements here, for instance, it's always a woman who's cooking, it's always a woman who's cleaning. And I've been told, apparently, in most of the households in Pakistan, the sisters are, so to say, told to iron their brother's clothes, to cook food for them, and the men don't do anything. So the women is there to serve the men as it is, starting from a very basic home unit to, the, you know, whether it's the prime minister of the country, I would think. So that there's got to be a change in the mindset of people. You're fighting a mentality here. You're, you know, you can bring about laws, you can tr try deterring all of this, but at the end of the day, it's a mindset you're fighting. That's a very so good point. Uh, Ma'am, in your opinion, uh, this mindset issue, uh, that is really at the heart of the problem here. Uh, how can that be addressed effectively? It, it's one thing to say that it starts at the home, but who are, how, who's going to Actually, teach those parents a, to teach their children? It's, it's a, a big it's issue. A, it's a very complicated, very complex, very difficult, very impossible issue. If you see being a Muslim or Islam, the basics of Islam, how Islam, you know, uh, the first teachings were due to these daughters being buried alive. Right. So it starts from the, you know, uh, uh, time immemorial that this mindset, this patriarchy in which women are just considered as entity. They are just mm -hmm. supposed to, uh, you know, behave. They are just supposed to obey. They are just supposed to perform. But that was perform. not the role that Hazrat Khatija had in uh, yes. the historical context. The Holy Prophet had elevated in her fact, level to a very a high level. She it was the first Muslim, in fact. It, it is mm -hmm. a game of power. In, when we say it's a patriarchy, but it's a game of power. The one who holds more power has captured, you know, the one less in power. So that is the whole story about it. Why would they allow, why would they let these things happen? Definitely they have to use them in all aspects. I'm not saying that it is across the board. Definitely lots of successful uh, women have men b at their back, but overall in society, this is an issue because it has been taken as it is in our system, in our, as, our, as she said, it, in our mindset. The boy, when he grows, he's a very young person. He's supposed to go along with a girl, you know, to suppose her who's 20 years old and he's five years old. So this system is overall has been taken, adapted, and practiced as it is. So mm. there is no one to challenge that status quo. There is no one to challenge that uh, stereotype. And those who rise, stand up against, speak against these things, they are always, you know, the one who has to face so much uh, uh, opposition from society, uh, they have to face the brunt of, you know, and so much force from society that they have, they, they, it's very difficult for them to stand. And there are very strange type of responses. I was just reading from social media that some girls who, even in Khadija case, lots of people were giving her these type of uh, uh, just uh, support that, you know, your dupatta is your tool, just wear it, mm. you should aware, uh, uh, be away, uh, uh, keep away yourself away from the boys and these type of things. But instead of it, why don't we accept that in not only overall as a human being or even in Islam everywhere, both men and uh, women are equal. They are both humans, they both have rights. Mm. So everybody has the right to exercise their personal freedom, their personal likeness and dislikes. And definitely overall in the ambit of uh, you know, do's and don'ts, but in our society, it's not at all. Even now in Pakistan, you see there are uh, everywhere the, the, the history and the even contemporary uh, era is replete with some examples where you are not, you're denied to your right to education. You are denied your right to get married, mm -hmm. even you are mm -hmm. above 18. So if there are basic rights are not, uh, you know, given to the women in society, 
uh, the when who, women who are married but not happy, they have to struggle so much, you know, to get themselves free from all that violence. I am personally was discussing with her before starting this program that so many women come to me, uh, they are bruised, they are, uh, mm -hmm. you know, injured, and they are a, a, a victim of such brutal violence, but they don't have any avenue to go because this is again a patriarchal society. Everybody, even the police says, no, this is your personal, personal issue. Okay. You settle it at home. So if for women, uh, there is no place to go even uh, judiciary or any other things. We have such, uh, I mean, government has made some uh, structures like uh, commission on status of women and this and that, but they don't walk, they are too much, you know, theoretical. Uh, in practice, whenever in reality women face those issues, they have no place to go. Yeah, that it is very unfortunate, ma'am. Uh, let, let's talk about another aspect that you mentioned earlier, and that was victim blaming and victim shaming. Whenever, uh, first of all, when such uh, uh, cases do come out into the public, uh, there is a lot of uh, uh, side taking going on. Yes. Uh, usually what we see is that uh, individuals uh, who, who are in a position of power or they, uh, they tend to abuse that power in terms of harassing women at the workplace or whatever. Uh, it's always the, the uh, he said, she said versus situation that we see uh, you know, happening in, in, in the public. Uh, Misha Shafi's case comes to mind uh, recently. Uh, most people uh, did not believe her and uh, most people sided with the uh, aggressor rather than the victim. And that is also a pattern that we see happening across the board. Uh, why do you think that is the case? Well, firstly, I think there's just this culture in, in the subcontinent of plotting on your son. Do you think it's the subcontinent or do you think it's a global issue? Because uh, we've um, seen the similar attitudes uh, uh, I think chauvinism, misogyny is a universal thing. It's nothing to do with the subcontinent. I think you it, have it across the world. It it would be across the world, but more so in developing countries, I would think. I d because, you know, uh, recently the I... The intensity may be less. The yeah, the intensity is definitely less. It's in, in Pakistan, in India, there's this, you know, this kind of pride in having a son. And um, recently I read something uh, in, in a newspaper. It said in Karachi, they found 300 babies in um, garbage dumps and from January uh, in 90% girls. So of course there's this you know kind of uh, pride in having a son, and there's this uh, the upper hand is obviously with the boys here. So um, sorry, uh, where were we? We were <laughs> talking about blaming and shaming the victim blaming rather and shaming, than yes. rather so, than giving them uh, the kind of rehabilitation or even yes. believing their version of events and always you know asking for proof when proof is very difficult to produce in such cases. Yeah, so that's primarily because there's this culture. So the women are supposed to stay home. The moment they want to get out of the house, it's a problem. And if they're out, they smile at a boy, and they're asking for it. They're wearing something, they're asking for it. There's just this mindset here. Now, how do you fight it? So I wrote my thesis on the Protection of Women Criminal Laws Amendment Act of 2006 from our masters. What I realized is that all the laws in, in Pakistan, the Islamic laws, are made by the Islamic Ideology Council, which comprises of all men, except Rahil Kazi, who's a recent, I think she, she's been there, but I interviewed her for my thesis, and she said, you know, I don't really have a say, because of course they're all senior, so I usually stay quiet. So there's the interpretation of Islam. Islam is also to evolve. It's for, it, it came for eternity, right? Ijtihad. Uh, yeah, so it's about Ijtihad. Yeah, so it, it, it has to evolve. Saudi Arabia women were not allowed to drive today, they are. So that's the same Islam applicable today where women are driving. Yeah, but there's so, a lot of backlash happening in Saudi Arabia as a result yeah, of that of decision. Of course, of course there is backlash, but I think the men have to then take a stand. So, you know, whether it's your fathers, whether it's your husbands, they've got to take, take on this with you. So, I mean, with the Islamic Ideology Council, like I said, it was such, it was such a huge deal to bring about those amends in 2006. It was unbelievable. And in the end, they had to completely reshuffle the Islamic Ideology Council and bring in a professor from Leiden University and have him reinterpret the, the Zina ordinance in, in light of the Quran and the Hadith. So that's the kind of setup there is. You have to have more involvement of women in decision-making places, you know, and where they actually have a say, not just sitting there, not just kind of showpiecing. No, you've got to have them speak up for their rights. Absolutely. Uh, another thing that we've seen in our society and also um, in the subcontinent, uh, not so much in India, but still that the overall effect is definitely there, and that is women not being able to claim public spaces. As when you walk out onto yes. the, the streets of Pakistan, for example, mm -hmm. you, you'll see very few women on the roads. Mostly you'll just see men all over the place in, in every field. <coughs> uh, 
very uh, few cases of women, uh, you know, standing behind a counter in a shop, being a shopkeeper, or driving a motorcycle or driving a truck or a cab for that matter. There, there, there are those cases. We have a, a program in Punjab where the chief minister uh, gave out a number of motorbikes to yes. women, which is wonderful. We would like to see. So this reclaiming of public space that has mm. been taken away from women, how can uh, we help to spread awareness uh, that women are equal members of society and they deserve to uh, enjoy the public spaces just the way men do? We s can we work on that aspect as well? Because there's a lot of issues of eve teasing, there's a lot of issues of harassment that you see on the roads, which is why yeah. certain families or uh, male members of the family also force their uh, women folk to stay indoors because it, when they go out on the streets, they will face such harassment. So how do we deal with this issue? I think this is a very important question you, has, uh, you have put right now because normally we talk about manifestations like this reclaiming uh, you know, spaces. The main issues again of decision maker, women being involved in decision making, processes, giving, being, uh, you know, giving the choices, and there, that there has to be some system, some vehicle, some mechanism, you know, given by the, definitely first uh, unit is the household, the family, mm -hmm. but then another role comes from the government, the duty bearer, you know, and then people, then the instruments like media, until and unless we will mainstream women and give them such opportunities, such chances, where they come forward and, you know, claim their due role in society. We talk about uh, parliament, the, 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 the supreme, uh, you know, house uh, of legislature. You just see the number of women, hardly 233 were there in parliament or close to this number. So imagine this much, just a dot, you know, in overall society when you won't put them in the right positions where they will not only claim for themselves, but will, they will also be supporting the other peer women. We cannot think of just such a change in society in terms of empowering women. And uh, there are various avenues. It's not only education. First, we have to educate them. But other than that, we will have to make provisions in jobs, in organizations, you know, in different systems. We have to put some targets, some percentages, where we are supposed to mainstream them. Until, uh, unless we provide them opportunities, we can never think about it. We have to uh, make them econom economically empower. We have to, you know, give them such uh, uh, opportunities where they can change these stereotypes because uh, even in one village you give that opportunity to a to a lady to a woman she becomes a role model for the rest of the women and then others follow it we don't have any such examples many any such social protection support mechanisms and on the other hand these very few limited women are fighting the the, the stereotypes and the kind of social stigma they have to face even if a lady has to go out to study Hmm. to uh, from the primary education to the next secondary education level she has to face so much you know opposition from her uh, uh, you know same area i'm not talking about only the main cities i'm talking about the overall hmm. country where most of your uh, women are in the rural areas so think of them if they have to go house then again parents have to think of their security no we just can't think that them going to the school because they might get harassed they might people might question us that we are not the respectable people sending our daughters away and they uh, might break our respect and uh, our norms so there are so much uh, uh, such uh, uh, norms attached to the honor of women mm -hmm. that it is very hard even for parents to break it and number one being a patriarchal society it is understood that this is their limit this is beyond this they can't cross and there are very few women but there are very few uh, you know such examples where who can struggle then who have to you know uh, give their life to 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 get so, that so so society basically defines the role yes. of women Mm, uh, and gender. we're trying to go past that. So do you think that the, these taboos that have been created on the role of women in society, that they have to stay home and look after the kitchen and, you know, cleaning and that sort of thing, uh, that's their role and that's what they have to do. Uh, but that is now changing. Lots of women uh, are, don't have men in their households. <coughs> they have to be the breadwinners. They have to go and yeah. raise their children. But it's never seen as an equal partnership mm. between men and women uh, you know the, the man is the breadwinner the woman is the mother who looks after mm. the children at home there's no collaboration in our society e even if you although see although it yeah. is changing in cities mm. we are seeing now things are changing you know men and women are both working because economically it doesn't make sense anymore mm. and for pakistan's economic progress it's important that women play their role in in the economic uh, you know activity of the country 
that's also very important. But, but if you see behind the wall, apparently one change has come because women bring money, you know, they, they mm -hmm. uh, contribute economically. They are equally, you know, uh, supporting uh, out of the house, but they come back to the house, you mm -hmm. do a survey, a random survey, even in Islamabad among the way, amongst the very educated communities, she has to come back and then she has to start from zero to do the o whole overall house. whole household chores. Mm -hmm. So her responsibility, her burden, her personal life has been even overburdened. It's not the that, that the mindset has changed and the both husband and uh, you know wife mm -hmm. are going out and earning. They come back, they support each other. It's not that case. Honestly speaking, I'm telling you. Because again, if a man comes home and he is supporting a woman, it is out of question for him because it is just yes. like challenging his ma male, you know, uh, uh, what should I say, ego. ego. Yes. So uh, that is not the case. For, so mindset is still there. Mindset is everywhere. Mindset is in the working at the workplace. Mindset is, you know, at the household level. Mindset is at the uh, legislature, assemblies. It is everywhere. Well, ma'am, so, we've been joined by Justice Jamila on the line. Let's uh, find out her opinion. Uh, thank you for joining us, ma'am. Uh, the question is that what kind of constitutional protections uh, have we uh, made for women in the last 70 years? We had the Women Protection Bill. Uh, that was a cause of controversy, but it did eventually pass. What was the issue with it? Why do you think that uh, women are not given adequate representation uh, in society? Uh, well, thanks for good morning to you. Uh, most of the bills uh, that were made were uh, about crimes against women, protection at workplaces, and things like that. It really had nothing to do with women specifically. Um, uh, earlier on, uh, the bills have been very good, and uh, I think women have. Uh, slowly but most surely carved out a niche for themselves in society and uh, I think they are now practically um, virtually walking shoulder to shoulder with men and I do agree with the lady who was speaking earlier that um, uh, she still has to bear her work of doing the housework but I was chuckling as well at what's the point of two people working if you can't hire good staff for yourself um, uh, so uh, yes uh, uh, there has been a lot of progress for women and uh, laws that have been legislated in favor of women. Um, uh, they're good laws, so some of them have to be um, amended. There need to be some amendments to them. Uh, however, having said that, there are not very many laws concerning what happens at home uh, because we still have the concept of Chadar and Char Divari. Uh, yes, there is a women. In fact, if we notice that uh, uh, harassment against, um, uh, protection of harassment against women at the workplace, then that has also been a very positive step for women. Um, and yes, I also, one of the things I find women are far, far more vociferous now. They know how to stand up and be counted for. Uh, uh, we're getting there. Show, slowly, but surely, we're getting there. And uh, I think uh, finally, uh, the, the first steps have been taken. I think we're way beyond the first steps now. Uh, they have been taken to give the, the women their just place in society. The implementation of women protection laws in Pakistan. Could you repeat yourself? Justice Jamila, are you there with us? Uh, yeah, I am with you, but I didn't, didn't get your last question. I didn't uh, the question is that are you satisfied with the level of implementation of women protection laws that have been enacted recently or there's still a lot of room to be covered in, in the implementation process? I am not because uh, there are lots of laws um, which are there which are good laws but then there is uh, the women. There has to be a, a, a step to a total change of mindset for women to go into society uh, go and complain or you know, use those laws. They're still not used to it. They're not, a of them are not even aware of the laws in their favor. Now, there has to be a lot. That's where you people come. That's where the media can help them. Uh, that, uh, you know, tell them about these laws. There's a myriad of laws in favor of women now. But how many lawyers don't know how many laws there are? I honestly, I, think about, I, I, I don't remember the number. I know there's a vast number, but I don't remember the exact number of how many laws have been. Um, uh, legislated in favor of women. So this is where I have a problem that um, most women don't know about these laws. And I dread that, the, uh, you know, also men have to be trained that, look, if a woman has a right, she wants to exercise this law in the favor, please let her do it. 
there needs to be those cultural bonds and shackles that have to be broken before the women actually come out there and use those laws in their favor. And apart, apart from the cultural shackles, they have to be made aware of those laws. Much Justice Jamila Jahanur for sharing your views with PTV World. Well, you heard what she said. Uh, the laws are there on the books, but many people are not aware of the existence of those laws. The implementing those laws is a, is a far cry because we don't we're not even aware that they exist. Yes. So how can we bridge this uh, this difference, this gap, this distance between uh, the the lack of knowledge of laws? Because in many cases, ignorance of the law is never accepted as an excuse. Yes. So as uh, Justice Jamila said, you've got to tr train people. You've got to tell them, you know, people don't even know what harassment is here. This one time a boy was following me, and I stopped the car by the policeman, and I told him that he's following me. And he gets out and he says, but I didn't say anything to her. I only just followed her. So stalking is harassment, you know. And he said, I'm Sharif ghar se hain. So, you know, I come from a decent household, and I was only just following her. So the thing is that you need to train the men. You need to tell them what exactly harassment is, staring at someone, Eves, Eve's teasing, you know, all of this amounts to harassment. Calling them when they don't want to take your calls or making advances when they've already rejected you. So, you, you know, it, only recently, um, in 2006, we've had the idea of marital rape in Pakistan. Before that, apparently, when, you, when you're getting married, you're just consenting to whatever, whenever. So there's, of course, that. And then also the fact that, you know, the idea of honor, the idea that a woman is just a chattel, from the father's home to the husband's home, the idea of ruksati, living in a joint family. How is joint family even Islamic if you have you, you are to have parda from your brother-in-law? So these things have to be thought thought about. You know, this has to these these things. You know, yes, you can say it's cultural. Ruksati has been happening for centuries, but is it really Islamic? Have, has anyone ever given a thought? And then you're just handing over a human being from one person to the next. I it's it's beyond me. It's so you think that, that in, in many respects, uh, society is stuck in a time warp uh, in yes. the past, and it hasn't mm. evolved with the changing uh, times of the it rest hasn't. of the world? Do you think it that hasn't. that's also an issue yes, that needs to and, be dealt with? It? How can we overcome that? You've got, to, you've got to reinterpret things. You've got to evolve with time. That, that's yeah, what it, growing it, is. Obviously, evolution is also yeah. a natural process. But uh, it's, it, it's, it's not working. It's not working. I mean, because these are dogmatic views. That the, the moment you touch them, there's a backlash, like you said. I mean, when the girls were out on, on the streets in Karachi, Lahore, and Islamabad on bikes, you saw how, how they were trolling them on social media. Just being on a bike, you know? So talk about public spaces. So talk we're about talking about how can we change these, uh, these chauvinistic, misogynistic attitudes? Uh, how, how can we break that barrier? That is the real question here. Because, of course, I think in the there education are egos institutions. that there's education. There's so much that's yes. at play. So I think the media has a huge role the kind of uh, dramas that are being made or the kind of advertisements that there are. I think that's a very good point that, that you've raised. You know, there's definitely got, you've got to show w the, the, you know, downside of it, how to improve the situation. Then there's also the fact that you've got to have workshops in schools. From a very young age, you've got to tell a child how to behave with a woman. You know, staring at her, judging her on what she wears. That's how I was brought up. The school I went to, that's what they told me. You know, either you, you dress a certain way, you're a decent woman, you, dress a, you don't dress in a certain way, you're not a decent woman. You've got to break these stereotypes down. And that is going to start at a very young level, where you, where, you know the brain is impressionable. Not when a, a man is 25 years old. It's very mm. difficult to kind of break, that, break it down then. Right. So at schools, at homes, the media, advertisements, dramas, so even cartoons. This is a very good there. point that you've raised about the, the content on Pakistani uh, drama channels. If you just see every single play revolves around uh, the issues of marriage or divorce, mm -hmm. or uh, there's th there's nothing else that they seem to be able to talk about. I, it's either the relationship between the household or the mother-in-law, the daughter-in-law, yes. or the, the the aunt. You know, th th that's mm -hmm. what it revolves around. Completely every single play, th they just can't seem to go beyond that mm. that strange kind of an uh, uh, environment that they portray, which in many cases is not even reflective or uh, you know representative of uh, of society. How can we address this particular issue? Because the TV channels say that that's what people want to watch. Uh, but uh, but uh, you know, amongst all these type of uh, what sells most, they they produce that. But mm -hmm. overall, if you see a uh, few TV channels had set the trend, like Hum TV had set the trend of making issue-based dramas, and Uran was one such drama which was based on sexual abuse. 
and that gained lots of popularity because uh, this drama is a very old genre of bringing change in society. You show them, you determine a lifestyle. Like just like corporate sector, when they sell things before that, they work on the human behavior and they create a lifestyle. And once they make people used to of that, then they introduce that product. So same is the case with uh, you know media, with dramas, with all such things. We will have to set trend by making more and more issue-based such dramas where people believe, where young generation see this, where household women see this, and they adopt it definitely, not consciously but unconsciously. And that is how the whole society picks up things. On social media, if there are any such role models they see, they idealize, they follow them. And that is one of the very, very effective tool in the current, you know, uh, contemporary era where you have to use maximum, uh, uh, ma make maximum use of such such tools like media, like social media, like plays, uh, songs, and other side things where you can uh, engage uh, youth because uh, now we can, uh, we definitely we are hopeful, but the most hope we should now be keeping is on the our young people, on on the kids, and that is it where you have to start from the household where the mother who once was herself a victim of abuse, mm -hmm. she has to train uh, both her child, boy and girl, on equal basis. Not that he's a boy and he's a differential, you know, treatment at home and the girl has to uh, be, you know, in that, again, uh, uh, stereotype position. So household is one level and then educational institutes. Where apart from well, having the I'm only... I'm sorry to interrupt you, ma'am, because when you, there are two things that I've taken uh, from what you're saying. First thing is about role models. Yeah. Uh, we have not created uh, good role models Definitely. for the youth to, to follow or to look up to. They're, I can't think of any. Uh, mm. Maybe a few like Asma Jangi, but all the good role models for women out there or even for yeah. men are disappearing and there, there doesn't seem to be anybody who's filling Actually, those spaces. Actually, th th there is a vacuum. That is the reason. You see, if there are uh, even a couple of women who rose, uh, you know, who rose against all these stereotypes, standards, people did follow them. People did idealize them. And, and, and other ways, as I said, we have to mainstream them. We have to ensure such, uh, give uh, such opportunities to women in different institutions. Number one, education. After education, we have to sh ensure they comes into, you know, jobs, entrepreneurs, and any other such opportunities. I was working with UNICEF and all such UN agencies, they have always a mandate of having equal gender, gender ratio. So in those uh, offices, they are same people from the same society, but when there are more women, they are women in majority, then these type of issues are very less to encounter. But if you see uh, courts, uh, lawyers, they are just hardly invisible number of uh, you know female lawyers or in judiciary judges amongst all the males uh, around. Definitely, the power becomes imbalanced. And I was, uh, I have uh, seen many such interviews of uh, women, in, even in judiciary, where they said they were really, they really felt harassed. They could not uh, carry on. After uh, you know making so much uh, investment in their career, they had to say goodbye to it because of again uh, that uh, too much um, uh, influence of males in in those uh, area, uh, you know uh, careers mm -hmm. or in those uh, different uh, jobs. So we have to set the trend. We have to uh, start. And again, they, 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 if the government is really serious, if the government has making some some mechanisms, suppose women empowerment uh, such institutions or national commissions or the provincial commissions on status of women or any other uh, uh, such avenues where they have uh, given them the mandate to work on women empowerment, there will, has to be some practical ways. One is to ha have some role models to bring them forward, show them to the public that they should be following them. Like I am one of the role models on Pakistan Alliance on Girls Education, we go to all those government schools. We tell them our stories, that how we started, what kind of challenges we faced in our childhood, how, how like I was from a rural area, what difficulties I faced while getting education and then, uh, you know, reaching up to that state. And those young girls do follow. They do, you know, uh, listen get to us. And they do get inspired. So we have not as uh, such, uh, up till now, set such examples. And there are always extremes in society. So the both male and female have to work together because today it's not only a female, it's your daughter also, it's your mother also, it's your wife also. We, will ho we have to think of overall as a society, a very peaceful, a very balanced society where a woman when goes out alone on the street in the market, she should not be feeling scared, she should not be feeling uncomfortable, she should not be feeling harassed because uh, long back I heard a very, uh, uh, I mean very known lady saying that uh, that day I will consider change has come to Pakistan where I, when I walk on the beach in, pa in Karachi and nobody should look up to me. So uh, still uh, uh, a long way, you know, we have to go a long way in which definitely the society 
has to play its role, but overall the government also has to play its role. The society in terms of mindset, but the government in terms of overall giving a system, overall giving us some, some uh, uh, you know, support uh, exclusively for women. I just gave you the example of number of women in the parliament. They are invisible. So uh, in, in uh, lots of cases when happened uh, during this year when the women were abused or when the character assassination was done, the, peop the caucus group of women even could not stand up and raise against those issues because they were even scared. They said we can't face it uh, at the personal level. When there were cases of this Zainab case and uh, the sexual abuses, I know personally uh, a couple of parliamentarians, they said it happened at our house but out of this social stigma and taboo, we could not take it out because, you know, there is another issue in society. The moment some girl, uh, you know, when stands against these odds, again it is said that she will be rejected from the society. She will not be able to get married. She will not be able to live a normal life in society. So because of fear of that social pressure, they have to go back on the back foot. So that is another irony, a uh, fate that in spite of all those pressures, somebody wants to stand up and do things, they, 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 they have to face lots of opposition. Well, just to uh, clarify what you're talking about, uh, recently there was also a lot of uh, halabaloo hue and cry in the media regarding an examiner who was molesting students while mm -hmm. they were undertaking their biolo biology practical exam. And it came out in the papers, it was highlighted. But it was one of the teachers, the female teacher of those students said, keep quiet, don't talk about it because you know this guy has the power to fail you so mm. just keep it quiet and you know she was trying to brush it under the carpet how can we change these kind of attitudes why was it a woman who did not stand with her own girl students and was uh, protecting the, the molester the examiner who was in a position of power how do we change these uh, mental attitudes it's the whole idea of izzat right because you're training the moment a, woman, a girl is born you're training her to get married to go to a different household where izzat is a big deal so I think that's the mindset then, like I said, the mentality. So I, I don't know about um, failing in the exam. That shouldn't be as big of an issue as it would have been once somebody's out there in the society and they've been molested, so to say, or they've been raped, so to say. So they're, they're scarred for life. That's, that's a problem. So when you talk about role models, you don't, you don't just need women role models. You need male mo role models to go out there and tell men how to behave. Bill Gates helps his, uh, his wife in the kitchen. You know, nobody leaves the kitchen in their house until mo the mother leaves the kitchen. That's what Melinda Gates said in her interview. So, I mean, that is a role model you should be following. Respecting women, sharing responsibility, giving them an equal footing, a platform. Women want to do a lot, but are they allowed to? Are they being given that space is the problem. So it's the men, whether it's the father or the husband or the brother. The brothers also, by the way, So how do we address the, this, uh, this attitude in men? Uh, because... It's not all men, obviously, because that's another you know thing that, yeah. that men put up as a defense and say, hey, I'm not like that. Uh, you know, maybe my driver is like that, but uh, my cook is like that, but I'm not. You know, I, I support my wife or whatever, uh, or my mother or my sister in, in any way that they ask me to. So you have that duality existing in society. How do you bridge that? Uh, that, that you know, it's, it's kind of like this. Um it, it's working both ways. So the men have this idea of a decent woman. The, the, the women e are trying the, the to fit into that. The economic background of the individuals here, I think, is what's playing you know, a I very crucial role. I don't think that matters. You don't think so? I don't think so. I've seen a, a, you know, a great amount of gender uh, roles being defined or uh, a chauvinistic attitude in the elite households also. Okay. You know, where, and you've seen yeah. the, the, the converse of, uh, of poor households having you know, very strong male figures who support their, their women. Their women. I mean, so it, in Punjab, for instance, in women it, have been it, working for centuries in, in the fields. Uh, right. You know, so they are economically... But even there, they're used as slave labor, by the way. Well, so are men, so are children. That's true. You know. Mm. Well, so we leave it at that. that. Thank you very much for taking part in this discussion. We hope and we pray that... Uh, uh, women's status in society is acknowledged and they are equal members of society. We hope and pray that we move towards that sort of a Pakistan uh, sooner rather than later. Thank, Thank you very much for taking out the time and sharing your views with PTV World. You heard the conversation and as always we like to say do draw your own conclusions from what you've heard but we hope and pray that uh, Pakistan can see the day when men and women are equally respected in our society. With that hope and on that note it's goodbye.